Hey, this is Professor Bennett from DigitalAudioTheory.com. This programming example comes from Chapter 6, which covers Dither. It's 6.4.1. Now, in the last example, we looked at the impact of Dither with a rectangular probability density function, or RPDF Dither. Now, while RPDF Dither successfully decoupled large level signals from the quantization noise, some correlation to the signal was still observed at very low level signals. So while noise modulation uh, was reduced with RPDF dither, some still remained. So in this programming example, a very low level signal with an amplitude of Q over 4, so smaller than the lowest quantization step size, uh, it's too low to be captured by the quantizer alone. But the noise modulation appears once some dither is added. We saw this in the last programming example. So here's 6.3.1. And if we load it up and run this code, here's our low level signal. Uh, we set it as a cosine that is 1 quarter of a Q level. But if we add some dither to it and quantize, lo and behold, the noise modulation appears again. You can see it tracking with the phase of this low level signal. A different type of dither can be created known as triangular PDF or TPDF dither. A triangular PDF can be generated by adding or subtracting two random variables with rectangular PDFs. This process can be imagined with a pair of dice. You know that if you roll a single die that the probability of any given number landing up is uniform, 1 over 6. In other words, a roll of a single die exhibits an R PDF distribution. However, if we roll a pair of dice, which are completely random and independent of one another, then the likelihood of rolling any sum of numbers is no longer uniform. Think about it. There are a total of 36 possible combinations that sum to the possible values between 2 and 12. Now, there's only one throw that can produce 2, 1 plus 1. However, there were six throws that can produce a 7. 6 plus 1, 1 plus 6, 5 and 2, 2 and 5, 4 and 3, 3 and 4. So we start down low. There's only one throw to produce a 2, 6 throws to produce a 7, and then at the other side, we have only one throw, a 6 and a 6, that can give us a 12. There's our triangular shape. So since the dither is completely randomly generated, then any subsequent value, one to the next, will be independent of its preceding value. So if we add or difference the dither signal with itself, with its previous value, then we can actually generate a tPDF signal this way. It's actually less complicated than it sounds. The generation of tPDF dither uses a process known as backwards differencing. Conceptually, a backwards differencing algorithm accentuates or enhances the changes from one value to the next and diminishes any constant values from one moment to the next. So imagine the signal that changes only from 0 0.9 to 0 0.95. Large values, but when they're differenced, we're left with a small value, 0 0.05. On the other hand, if the value were to change from 0 0.9 to negative 0 0.9, then the difference, 1.8, is a much larger value. We will utilize backwards differencing to generate tPDF dither. So first, let's load in the low-level 40 hertz signal sampled at 40K with RPDF dither from the previous example. We've done that already, and we can see this in our plot. Next, we will add this triangular dither to the signal and quantize. So first, let's generate our triangular dither. We'll call this D tri. And it's going to be the exact same size as our RPDF dither. Um, and we need to initialize it. So we're going to set its very first value to be the same as the uh, RPDF dither. Now look at this. For the second sample of the triangular all the way to the end, we're going to take whatever the uh, whatever that corresponding value was in the RPDF dither, so wherever we are here on triangulars, equal to the same one on the rectangular one, minus the RPDF dither value from the preceding sample. So 
we're going to take all the values from the second sample to the end and subtract from that the preceding sample, the first sample to the end minus 1. And so this is going to get us our backwards differencing. So now we've generated our tpdf dither. Next, we're going to add this triangular dither to the signal. So here's our signal plus the triangular dither. And we're going to quantize it. We're going to save it in a variable called x8, so 8-bit quantized, with dither that's triangular. And we're going to plot this. Note that the quantization error is now much more decoupled from the signal. Finally, we can examine the PDF estimate of the T PDF dither. <laughs> Note here that the range of the T PDF dither value is going to be from minus Q to plus Q, which is twice as large as the range for the R PDF dither. Take a look. So we no longer have a uniform or rectangular shape. We have this triangular shape. We have a, a larger range. So our triangular dither is actually adding um, twice as much noise. So the RPDF dither adds three decibels to our noise floor, whereas the triangular PDF adds six decibels to our noise floor. So this is the hit we take, but what we gain is a further reduction of no noise modulation that occurs with very low level signals. So that's it for chapter six. Um, in the next programming example, we'll be in chapter seven, looking at some DSP basics. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.